What's up, YouTube? And welcome back to the stage of history. <laughs> I'm Sanjay. I'm Taya. And we are back again, bruh. Really, really, really. <laughs> Episode six. What is the name of this shit? Do not resuscitate this show. So anyway. <laughs> Batwoman. Batwoman, man. Do not resuscitate. Uh, I don't know what to say, but um, bruh, I'm just going to let you take it away. An experiment at Hamilton Dynamics Lab. A 10-year-old boy with leukemia got bitten by a bat during the bat rally in episode 2. Was treated with the cure from Mary's blood and is not only cured of the poison, but also his leukemia. Really? Full-blown cancer. Doctors are trying to recreate the cure's effects by using the little boy's blood. They inject it into an old man who dies. Immediately. One of the doctors, Dr. Rogers, decides it's best to send a clearly mentally unstable man named Aaron to retrieve more of the cure from Mary. He's an obscure villain from like way back. But... Anyways. We see Ryan fighting thugs in an alley and Luke notices her heart rate increase and offers backup. Who is the Ryan backup? declines, shuts off comms, finishes fighting without tying anyone up, ducks around the corner and removes her cowl in obvious distress. Apparently, Ryan was okay enough to get to Angelique's place and then they go to the hospital of all places. The real hospital. <laughs> you just heard me say she was in an alley, her heart rate was increasing, you know, Lucas worried about her and shit. And mm. she's like, fuck this, I got this. You know what I'm saying? But then she beat the dudes up. And like I said, she didn't tie nobody out. She ain't never tied no damn body. Up. It? Well, unless she's trying to get information out of them. Hell yeah, then in that case, she ties them up and tortures them. <laughs> <laughs> Tighten it up, riders. You know how much? Man, I'm about done trying to tell these people to tighten this show up. I'm done. Why would you turn off your comms if you know that you're having a medical issue right now? <laughs> you can't come a bitch like you know The one motherfucker that knows about your injury and everything about it, or at least, you know, uh, shit, more about it than the fucking hospital. To the hospital. Mm. Whatever. Angelique stops a doctor running down the hallway to tell him they've been waiting for two hours. He says he's not her attending. Angelique tells him about a medical community issue. <laughs> Here we go. Implicit bias. Doctor states someone's coding down the hall and tries to leave, but Angelique insists that he stay and let her educate him, then threatens him. He leaves and says he'll find her doctor. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, coding means what? You're, you know, you're an obvious distress and you're about to die. Somebody, okay, somebody so is. Somebody about to die. <sighs> and your ass want to sit up here and talk about implicit bias. Look, that's a great conversation when somebody's not fucking dying. <laughs> Jesus Christ, these writers. Anyway, go ahead. The doctor walks up and checks on Ryan's non-glowing wound, which conveniently she, not glowing, <laughs> which she says she's had for two months. Right. <laughs> I'm, we sitting up here thinking it's a couple of weeks. <laughs> he asks where she got it because it looks intense. She says it's from a spider at her job stock room. I'm thinking that's oh, a workers' Lord. comp situation. If that was the case. And, you know. <laughs> they don't know about any of that stuff. The writers don't know about any of that. They don't know how the law work. They don't know about any of they that. They just write words. They just write words and put it on and they just film it and anyway, keep going. <laughs> the doctor prescribes antibiotics. Angelique demands tests, but Ryan's insurance won't cover them, so she offers to cover the cost. Doc puts an order for the test and leaves. Ryan notices Angelique's phone is blowing up. Angelique feels judged. 
Ryan just wants Ange to get out of her job before it's too late. Angelique feels like she can't get out of it because whoever her plug is and customers are. Moving on. Ocean and Alice on an abandoned train. Ocean says he's had nothing to do with Kate's plane going down or her disappearance and trashes Alice's killing skills again. Alice says Sophia believes Ocean framed her for the Kate stuff and she's just doing her due diligence. Trying to see like who's telling the truth or whatever. She doesn't she don't want to kill nobody unnecessarily, which is totally different for her character seeing as how last year she been didn't get killing off motherfuckers off. left and right like, any other time. Like she didn't give a shit. Now all of a sudden she got a a, a heart? Mm-hmm. The fuck? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ocean says he's a botanist and wants no part of whatever Alice and Sophia have going on. But Alice still wonders why neither of them remember being on Coriana together. He says he grows psychedelic mushrooms. <laughs> Snake bite. She reminds him that Sophia has an army and won't stop hunting him. He's like, look, man, I, I grow psychedelic mushrooms and shit. Like, I, I've forgotten a few things, you know, so... <laughs> Whatever the fuck you talking about, girl. You know, like... Alice, like, nah, she specifically made certain shit disappear about mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. Ocean says he trained that army, tried to leave with the flower, but woke up in Gotham not knowing anything. Really? I just want to say that while he was saying this whole story about, you know, what he did there and what he was trying to do when he left, and the fact that he, you know, woke up in Gotham and said he didn't know nothing, but he's telling me a story about what happened. <laughs> Seriously? Do you not remember or do you remember? Right. Exactly. Look, <laughs> do the writers remember? <laughs> I don't, Never. I don't they, think they remember. <laughs> they on the mushrooms he was growing and shit. <laughs> growing that shit for the staff. <laughs> <laughs> Alice thinks Sophia erased all of her and Ocean's memories together. Anyway. Jacob and Mary driving from an attorney visit, during which apparently the attorney is trying to get Kate to be declared dead. Kate! They get T-boned by Aaron, the crazy guy Dr. Rogers let out, and abducted. Crofy stops by Kate's bar, <laughs> insisting Ryan help bug Angelique's phone. Ryan says no, but retracts that when Sophie agrees to get rid of the case the crows have been building on Angelique. Moving on. Mary and Jacob wake up in her clinic, where Aaron is questioning her about the cure. Mary says that her supply ran out and it's no longer in her system. What? Definitely a head till moment. <laughs> but then says. If someone got some of her blood, it would help them, but you cannot make more of the cure from a cured person, basically. Okay, then. But I'm like, isn't that what they're doing with your blood, Mary? Like, She's the source of it, so. No, no. See, she got the cure, she drank the cure. Right. So it was in her system. But then. But now it's not. You know, she, she was cured. And they're using her cured blood to cure people, but it can't go again. Yeah, after you, can, that. you can't re- you can't synthesize it from someone else. Uh, but I'm wondering, like, it, can it still be synthesized from her? But she's saying it can't. But then she said, it, I don't know. I don't she know. Gave this fool hope. Anyway, <laughs> it can it or can't it? <laughs> Who knows? That basically, I think they fucked up and backed themselves into a corner with this whole shit <laughs> and Ryan's arm and oh my god, I don't know. It's just stupid. But anyway, 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 anyway. Mary tells Jacob that they're in her clinic and she's been practicing underground medicine for two years. Two years. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> and then we see Ryan has a uniform for Angelique so she can get out of dealing and get a regular job at the holdup, you know, Kate's old bar. Mm-hmm. Angelique said that she lied about wanting to get out. She, she likes, likes what, she what she does and does. feels respected. People respect me. Ryan has some pain. Angelique goes to get some medicine and Ryan takes this opportunity to bug Angelique's phone. Because, you know, Sophie asked her to. Oh, snitch. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor from the hospital calls Ryan and asks to do retests because he believes her samples were contaminated by something radioactive. Like, you know, 
the spider. <laughs> Ryan Parker. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> At Mary's clinic, Aaron still demanding Mary make more of the antidote. Mary tells him she can't. Aaron stabs Jacob. Oh my God. Twice. Well, he, he it, it took a minute before he stabbed him again, but look, the point is, he gets that seriously. Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mary tells Aaron about Coriana and the flower to stop him from killing Jacob, because he went from stabbing him in the gut to you know bringing the blade up toward his neck. So she got all nervous, like mm-hmm. spilling the beans and shit, basically. Then we see Alice touches Ocean to show him that they were once together. How is this? <laughs> is this magic? I don't get it. Like you can just touch somebody and just start having this is just a whole montage full of shit. Their whole dynamic and really, oh my god! It's like they didn't know what to do. With her. Like Alice was so fucking awesome the first season. She was the only good thing about her. Yeah. But then, this season, it's like, they're just holding on to her. They're keeping her presence there, but she's not even acting the same way. What they need to do is bring Victor's ass back and let him just be Mm -hmm. the big bad and her going against him. Because the one thing this show needs is a good villain. And he's been the only villain that was any good on this show. (laughs) And that was the only episode I actually enjoyed. You it was know like, what I'm that was that was the last time they went up. You know, you know what I'm upwards and then And then right back like, down. Like shoots and ladders are on this pitch and they just can't get back up for nothing. Nope. Like, <laughs> you need a good you need a good villain. At least if your writing's gonna be, you know, subpar, at least you can have a good villain to keep everything together but yeah they they don't know what the fuck they doing whatever Ryan's in the back cave looking up kryptonite apparently for the first time since getting shot in episode 1 mind you this is episode 6 mm-hmm. and she's just now looking up kryptonite but you know what <laughs> I would have looked that shit up as soon as I got hit by it as soon as I was in an okay place you know away from danger or anything like that really though when she brought the suit back with a big ass hole in it to Luke and Mary and they're like oh wow you're alive you know what I'm saying I'm like wouldn't you want to examine her fake doctor and you know MIT yeah, exactly. grad I'm exactly. just saying but they never know. did she never did Mary should have looked that at her that immediately that wasn't even a question like, not at all they was like oh okay you alright they was more concerned about the suit <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> like fuck you. Fuck who's wearing it. Like, <laughs> you all be alright, bitch. Let me, let me see what the suit looks like. <laughs> so Luke walks in and tells Ryan that the reason Sophie asked her to set up Angelique was so that they could find Ocean. Says the tip came from Alice. Ryan is thrown off by the mention of Alice. <laughs> Luke tells Ryan that he went to Sophie's house and Alice was there and she pulled a gun on him. He said he went there the other day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look. <laughs> uh, Ryan asked if he reported her whereabouts to the police. <laughs> Mary calls Luke, Lucas, and tells him to bring the map of Coriana to her dad at the clinic. She never calls me Lucas. <laughs> And her dad doesn't know about that place. So these are clues and they're picked up on. Ryan gets ready to go but collapses in pain from her wound. That she shows Luke and is glowing again. Really? <laughs> Not when the doctor needed it to glow. <laughs> they don't glow in front of nobody else. Just now. That's convenience. <laughs> Luke helps her up and asks why she didn't say anything about it. She says she was trying to prove to him that she could be that woman after begging to wear the suit. Ryan insists on going to help Mary, asks Luke to be useful for once, and have her back. Oh my god, I could have sworn this motherfucker apologized <laughs> to her 
like a couple episodes ago, <laughs> a few episodes back. He yeah. didn't apologize. So I'm thinking that's the end of it. But apparently, <laughs> apparently off screen or something, he been harassing her and fucking with her this whole time. But we haven't seen that, so. Yeah, that is, I just, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's like they retconned his apology. <laughs> no, right after he did she, it. She's still a victim. Like, she's trying to prove herself to this fool. Like, you know, why are you working so hard, bitch? You trying to kill yourself, literally. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. To... I thought she didn't need nobody's approval. What? What's up with that? Right? Then she learned that from a wolf spider. I'm trying to prove myself, but just last week you said, I don't need your approval. And I know that shit was hurting her then, because that's remember when she fell off that, that chain, she was trying to slide down and shit. You know, she couldn't even hold her, her weight on it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, yeah, that was crazy. But yeah, Alice tries to kill Ocean, but ends up sparring and having flashbacks of him training her and the two of them being romantic together. Didn't he say he trained Sophia's army? Yeah, but see, they both said they were on Corian at the same time, apparently, right. but they don't remember each other. No. Hmm. But so them sparring and basically touching at this point is bringing back these flashbacks. Magically. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Magically bringing back memories by touching each other. <laughs> <laughs> she, she gave him some magical properties or something. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's the Force. Sure. You know, she do Je- got she Jedi. do got Jedi working for her and shit. Mm-hmm. We already seen stormtroopers that couldn't hit wolf spiders. Mm-hmm. Moving on. Trophy interrupts and demands a Napier painting from Ocean, whom she announces is suspected of starting the latest drug epidemic in Gotham. He grows the mushrooms mm-hmm. in the snake in the snake bite situation. Right, apparently. Right. All right, writers. Being kind of mm, about that, but okay, I got the information. Thanks for giving it to us. Mm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Ocean burns blood off the painting to reveal a map underneath it and gives it to Sophie against Alice's wishes. Notice when he burns off the you know the human flesh or whatever. <laughs> how does the map not burn? Mm-hmm. I mean, I thought fire burns everything it comes in contact with. Look, everything that Alice and Ocean touch is magical, apparently. Now. So now, all of a sudden, they're so magical that fire can't even burn the map that this dude is holding. I don't know. I'm look. I'm just. Tra- I want to ask. Make sense. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we should ask Caroline Dries. I don't know. Hmm. Does paper not burn in, in your writings? <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, you know. What kind of flame retardant shit is this? I guess a Joker had it all figured out, huh? Mm-hmm. Flame proof the map or something? Mm-hmm. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Sophie calls Luke and he explains Mary and Jacob's situation. So Sophie heads to the clinic with the real map in hand. Ryan is ready to go help, and Luke tells her that the suit can give one shot of adrenaline and to say the word if she needs it. But she's like, I got this. I don't need no help. He's like, I know you got this. Because he feels bad, you know, she laid it real thick on him, you know, the whole guilt trip shit. So he's like, I got you, you know. Apologizing ain't enough, I guess. So. <laughs> At the clinic. Aaron is breaking things and tries to kill Jacob, but Sophie arrives and threatens to shoot. So he throws a metal bed frame at her. She gets hit and drops a painting and falls to the ground. Mary kicks uh, something sharp or whatever to Jacob to get free. Aaron starts to choke Mary, but Jacob is free and he defends her. Batwoman shows up, tells Mary and Jacob to leave, but Jacob doesn't want to leave Sophie. Batwoman promises to protect her, so he leaves with Mary. Batwoman starts to fight Aaron, but gets knocked to the ground and requests an adrenaline shot. Bounces up immediately and stops Aaron from getting away with fate. Sophie enters the room, followed by masked men, one of which has a gun to her head. They demand the map in exchange for Sophie's life. Batwoman concedes. 
And I think one of these masked men is Dr. Rogers. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I mean, because they show the, you know, the different dudes' shoes and, you know, pants or whatnot as they were walking in. I was trying to figure out the significance, but there was one of these things that, you know, don't go with the others, you mm-hmm. know? So, <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking it was his old desperate ass. <laughs> and really, though, the question on my mind while, while he came in there, I was just like, how did they know to go to her lab? Like, how did they know where it was? Exactly. None when of did, that is when explained. Did, when did Aaron call this motherfucker? Even though the Dr. Rogers sent Aaron to go get this shit. How, how did he know where to send him? Right. How did he know that Mary was going to be at that intersection at that time to oh be my God. hit by that truck? Was he trailing them, maybe, and took an alternate route and flanked them or something like that? Who knows? Oh, no, look. Who knows anything in this place? <laughs> no. I'm so tired no. of this shit, I swear. I don't know. I'm tired of asking questions. I'm like, I don't know. Like, there should be a problem presented, you know? Like, some something goes wrong. They figure out the solution, and you know er- everything should be written better. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like, like, just the way that they're putting it out there. I was like, what the? What something is missing? Wait, wait, wait. Something always missing. No. <laughs> They put a bunch of shit out there and have no explanation to back it up all the time. I don't know. That's just what they do on this show. All That's the pattern. He did. He let the crazy dude out. Yeah, but how would he know where the clinic is? I have no idea. Nobody supposedly knows where. The, supposedly nobody <laughs> knows where the clinic is, but unless you're a patient, motherfuckers, or an employee. I don't know. <laughs> they, did they get word on the street? I mean, they could have at least. It could have been at least, they could have at least shot a scene of somebody telling him, or maybe he could have acted like, oh, I need some help, but you know, I don't have no money or so, something, so and then somebody could have directed him. And we have, we're, they leave the audience to put the pieces together, you know, and it's like, what the fuck is going yeah, on? Yeah, but some, sometimes we shouldn't have to put this shit together, No, we really though. shouldn't. Look, Simplistic okay. shit that should just be, that would take two seconds to explain, <laughs> and they don't do it. I don't know. Leave you with more and more questions. What the fuck? Why the fuck? What is going on here? Mm, mm, mm. This whole damn show is a question. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> yeah, Mary and Luke are talking about how meds aren't working on Ryan. Why no one told Luke about Ryan's wound and Luke and all of Ryan's terrorism while having a terminal illness. <laughs> <laughs> Luke questions how they will save Kate and Ryan without the map. Mary says, with her dad. <laughs> we have my dad. <laughs> then we see Jacob standing upright and chatting on the phone at Crow headquarters. Hold on. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Wait. When did, he, when did he receive any medical attention? We didn't see this happen. He didn't get none. He got stabbed in the <laughs> gut two times. And from what I can see, he never even bled. Well, he looked like he started to bleed while they were in the clinic. But when, when he, he got back to Crow's headquarters, his shit was clean. Convenient. His shirt was clean. He didn't have nothing on him. You got stabbed mm. in the gut twice. And somehow you're not internally bleeding the fuck out. Mm. Ooh, this writers. Mm. These writers. These writers. Okay. All right, moving on. Yeah, so he's aware that Hamilton Dynamics possibly has a map and he wants it. As he ends the call, though, Mary walks into his office, regretful because she told Aaron about Coriana. Jacob excuses her because of the circumstances. And Mary asks if he thinks her mom knew what Hamilton Dynamics was doing to Aaron. Because, you know, what he told them when they were in the clinic was... Hamilton Dynamics were doing experiments on him. Not just him, but yeah. That you know, on because he had a uh, what is it? Some kind of brain. What is it? He he was off in his personality. Basically, right, right. he would laugh at inappropriate moments and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So they gave him a 
craniotomy in which uh, during that procedure they expose his brain to UV light. Right, and they end up giving him like some kind of a tumor, uh, yeah, some so. brain cancer or whatever, <laughs> and it makes him fly into fits of rage. Which is why he was fucking shut up and super hyper, you know, just yeah. whatever. I think that was probably some of the best acting this episode. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he did good for a crazy guy. He you know? was a trip. Yeah. <laughs> I just wish they. I wish they would have got somebody that looked more like the actual villain that he was supposed to be. But it, it's okay. <laughs> he is pretty obscure, so maybe it's just insignificant. Yeah. So maybe it's like, uh, do you think my mom knew about what was happening over there at Hamilton Dynamics? And Jacob's like, uh, she would have done anything to help people. And, you know, she's kind of like her mom. So Mary says she knows he's mad about the clinic. He says he's shutting it down because it's illegal. Which is, <laughs> which is true. <laughs> Mary tries to defend it, saying her mom knew about the clinic and was proud of her. Really? And Jacob says her mom was conducting human experiments. Mary says she won't. Jacob says everyone she sees is an experiment because she isn't qualified to practice. Exactly. I'm glad somebody said it. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> somebody on the show said it. Shit. He's like, there are so many drugs in here and you are not, you know, registered to have this shit here. <laughs> no, no. Possession of drugs and shit that like, you ain't supposed to have. I mean, impersonating a doctor. Bruh. Uh, uh, I'm mm-hmm. like, damn, yeah, so at least somebody on this show know that this shit is some bullshit. Mm-mm-mm. Angelique stops by to see Ryan, confronts her about bugging her phone, and all the while Sophie is listening. Ryan explains that the crows had a case on Angelique and she was trying to help. Angelique leaves. Fuck you, bitch. You snitched. I'm <laughs> like... <laughs> Alice stabs Ocean in the chest and calls Sophia to tell her she wants to trade for Kate. But apparently, Ocean wasn't stabbed and it was someone who Alice made a mask for. Now, where did she get the materials to make this mask? Where did she get the body that she stabbed? Well, apparently they went and killed somebody and brought it back. I don't know, but... Mm -hmm. Mm. But that was the end of the episode. Was it? 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 Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Look, well, we did so good. We did. Oh my gosh. We'll check this out now. I need to talk about some shit. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I got through it. Oh my gosh, you don't even know how hard that was for me. And very quickly too. <laughs> oh my goodness. It, it is a lot of shit I want to say about this episode, but really, I just, I, I just kind of don't give a fuck. <laughs> I fucking hate this show. Seriously. So, what did we learn from this show, this, this episode? Not a motherfucking thing. <laughs> we got dumber from looking at this shit. Oh my goodness more confused about the care because I'm like oh my goodness and then I told you what uh, the crew from Batwoman tweeted or whatever after they aired this what did they say? No I told you they they tweeted a uh, little gif or whatever of Ryan you know quivering on the ground and shit like that and look over to oh they need to find a care and I was thinking to myself man Mary got it (laughs) <laughs> but she doesn't know so but I don't know it sounded like she kind of did when she was talking to Aaron and yeah the, like and it could come directly from her and you know they synthesized she should, she it from her okay. blood yeah and she should be okay but I don't you know, know. This, look, they gave us two this episode was really and, confusing and neither one of them was very clear as to which one was which so Mm, mm, mm. Look, I just, I can't, <laughs> this season just need to be over. I, I'm really tired of doing this shit. I'm not even playing. Like, this fucking show is, 
is killing me now on the inside. I'm just like, oh, we gotta do this shit again. But it's it's funny. It's it's so bad. It's funny, but at the same time, it's just like, why? Why are we doing this? Why? That shit is crazy. I just have fun with you, babe. Mm, I have fun with you too. <laughs> so I ain't got nothing else to say about this fucking show. So I am going to end it right here. You want to end it? I just want to say, dear CW. Please, please, please. Do not resuscitate this show <laughs> next season. No, let it die. Let it die. Anyway, we out of here. Bye. Bye.